So because it's spring in Australia, I thought why not do a bit of spring cleaning of my home directory. Now it might not look super clean in my terminal file manager, but as you can see, there are only 33 things in here. And if we LS it out, it looks a little better like this. And previously it looked a little something like this. So back at this point, I think there was roughly 70 things in this directory and now it's down to 33. And at the point it's at now, this is about as small as I can get it because there's a lot of applications where you just simply cannot move their files. And what we're doing today is going over the process that I went through so that you guys can do this yourself as well. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our XDG base directories are configured correctly. So this is going to be setting some environment variables. So on ZSH, we do that in our ZSH env. In bash, you do it in your bash profile. And on fish, I have no idea. Go ask in the comment section. So we're going to set three variables in here. We're going to set our XDG data home. This is where application data files will be located and it should be set to home slash dot local slash share. We have our XDG cache home, which should be set to home slash dot cache. And this is used for application cache files. And we have our XDG config home, which should be set to home slash dot config. And this is for application config files. Now, you don't necessarily have to have them located here. This is just the default location and they should be set here because some applications don't actually read these variables, but will actually use these paths. So if you actually move them, then those applications will use the XDG locations and then other applications will use the ones that you set. My recommendation is sticking with the standard just to make sure as many applications as possible can actually be configured correctly. So from here, my recommendation is starting with the absolute easiest thing first, which is any files that just shouldn't be located in your home, get them out of your home. So say for example, you went and made a notes file and you just left it in your home directory. That shouldn't be there. It should be somewhere like your documents or say you downloaded an image and put it in your home or a video or anything like that. Anything that just simply shouldn't be located in your home directory, go and put it where it should be because I know how easy it is to start dumping files in your home directory without really thinking about it. And once you've actually got a couple in there, then you're more used to putting files in there. And eventually you have 50, then 100, then 200. And then one day you have so many files in there that you just cannot be bothered actually fixing it. Now for this part, there's not really a standard about where they should go. Put them wherever you're comfortable with but there is the XDG user directory spec, which you can also configure as well. So make sure you have an application called xdg-user-dir installed. And then from here, what we're gonna do is go into our config directory. And if you don't know your file in here called a user-dirs.dirs, then go and make that file. And what we can do in here is actually set things like where our default desktop folder should be or where our default downloads folder should be, templates, public documents, music, pictures, videos, so on and so forth. And there are a list of them on the Arch Linux wiki, which I will link down below. But these are just the standard ones that most people are probably going to need. And once you've actually done that, what you want to do is go run a program called xdg-user-ders-update and that will actually go and update all of those directories. And typically in graphical file managers, it'll also give those folders special icons. So for example, the desktop folder has this icon, pictures has this one, so on and so forth. Now doing that last step was entirely optional, but it will make it easier for various applications to actually work with those folders. Now from here, we get to the fun part, or I guess the better way to describe it is the part where you're gonna hate everything that you're doing. So these are the files that default to being located in home, but can simply be moved without any configuration. So for example, the .i3 directory can also be located in .config slash i3, or the .nvim directory can also be located in .config slash nvim. But there's not really a procedural way to work out what applications you can do this with and what applications you can't do this with. So my suggestion is starting with the Arch Linux wiki. So this has a pretty good list of all of the popular applications that are supported. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of things missing from this list, but most popular applications that are supported will actually be on here. So for example, let's say you wanted to fix something like Calcus. So by default, they'll be located in .calcus, but it can also be located in these places right here. Or we have something like the font config. 
and that can be located in the data home slash fonts or Emacs, it shows you where it can be located or various other things in here as well. So one problem you have when you're doing this though is sometimes it will actually change the names of the config files. So for example, let's say we look at something like i3. So i3, its config file is just named config. But this isn't always the case because you have cases like say LF where the config file is called LFRC. And then you have other cases where sometimes it actually keeps the dot on the file name and then it's in a folder but it's also a dot file as well. And then other cases where they don't use a folder whatsoever and they just dump the file directly into the dot config directory. So you sort of have to look at the specific applications that you're using and look at how the developers decided to support it if they decided to do so in the first place. Next up I would go and disable any files that get generated but you never actually use. One common example is your less history file which you probably didn't even know you had. So less actually does keep a history but I've never looked at it so what's the point of even having it? So to disable that all we have to do is set the less hist file variable to minus and then that file will no longer be generated because we can't move it into our .local slash share directory so we might as well get rid of it altogether. Next up it gets even more fun because these are the files that can be moved but require some level of configuration. So generally it's just setting an environment variable but sometimes it's a little bit more than that. So for example if you want to go and move your cargo directory all you have to do is set this variable right here or if we want to move our zsh hist file we can set this one right here or we want to set a zsh.dir and then that can contain our .zshrc and our zsh profile but won't actually contain our zsh environment file. That one still needs to be located in our home. And any semblance of a convention here goes completely out of the window. So for example, if you want to set our xnitrc, that's just one long name like this, but the gem path has an underscore in its name, and then the Java options is all of this nonsense. So once again, like with the previous section, there is a list on the Arch Linux wiki, and I would really recommend checking this out first before you go and do any digging for yourself, because this is just an easier way to go and find that information. So when you go and configure your xnitrc like this, it only works if you're running xnit directly. It won't actually work if you run startx, and most people typically run startx instead. So to go and fix that, what you have to do is just change the command you run when you're actually launching up startx. So you can actually pass a file into that application. Uh, we don't need this line right here. So what you do is just run startx and then pass in the path to wherever your new xnitrc is actually located. In my case, I've actually got that stored in a folder called x11 alongside some other files like my xmod map and my x resources, which both typically get dumped into the home directory, but they both get loaded in with an application that actually takes in a file path, so there's no reason to actually dump them into that directory. And here we get to the last part, which is the reason why I still have random folders in here like my .ssh folder, or my .mozilla folder, or this random .gnome folder I can't do anything about, or this .dir folder. And the reason for this is for two reasons. One, lazy developers. Two, ignorant developers. And I don't say ignorant lightly, because if we go and just search for won't fix on the Arch Linux wiki, and we go to open SSH, the first thing for this is, hey, please support free desktop XDG based dir. And this was back in 2012, and the first response to that was no. OpenSSH and its ancestors, blah, 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 have a 17 year history of using .SSH. This location is baked into innumerable users' brains, millions of happily working configurations and countless tools. Changing the location of our configuration would require a very strong justification and following a trend of desktop applications of which OpenSSH is not, is not sufficient. Now, no one was asking for it to be changed. All they wanted was the ability to configure it. And this has still been going on for the past eight years and there was even a post this year still asking them why they haven't fixed it. And this isn't the only application like this. We also have things like with RenPy, they won't fix it, or we have Veil, or I think Bash is also on this list as well. So, yep, Bash won't fix it. So if you go into this one, you can see basically why they won't fix it. And there's no reason to change historical behavior here. All the world is not Linux. Once again, this is just adding the ability to configure it, not forcing it to be in a different location. 
But some developers aren't as ignorant, some just haven't fixed it because they've gone and hard-coded a variable. And you can see a fairly good list about all the applications that do that in here. Now, this obviously, once again, isn't a complete list, but also some things on here actually do have fixes. So if you go down to ZSH, that actually does have a fix for everything besides the ZSH env. Now, there are hacks to get the ZSH env working in a different location, but it may cause some issues in some situations. Now, technically, anything you have access to the source code with, you can go and fix yourself. However, most people probably aren't going to fork every single application that puts something into their home directory. So, I'm not going to count those, but if you want to put in that work, then you can go and do that. But for anyone else, what do you do from here? Well, really, there's not that much you can do. Some people do like to go and move these to where they should be and then sim link them back to the home directory so they still work. However, I'm not personally a fan of this method because I still see sim links in my home directory. So for example, my ZSH env is a sim link. I don't actually go and hide sim links because everything I already have sim linked from a repo that stores everything anyway. So I kind of need to see that in the first place. But if you do hide sim links, then I guess that's a half solution, but I'm not a fan of it. Now you might be wondering, is there actually a reason to go about doing this? And really, no. No, there's not. This is just, I got bored doing some uni work and then started procrastinating. And then a couple hours later, I had cleaned up my home directory. So no, there's not actually a reason to do this. It does obviously make it a little bit easier to find files in this directory, but besides that, there's nothing really I can say about like performance boosts or anything like that. It's just sort of a procrastination thing. Now, if you followed along with my steps, let me know how many files you were left with after you had finished everything. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say today. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Corbinion, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montezar, Joseph, Peter the Road, Tony Brennan, Donald, John, Merrick, Mikkel, Nephite, Tees, and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, and Cointree, and all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.